I'm Gold Derby editor Daniel Montgomery here with Jake Garber, uh, the makeup designer for Samuel L. Jackson in The Last Days of Ptolemy Gray, where he plays a man in his 90s in varying stages of dementia. Uh, mm -hmm. You've been working with uh, Jackson for a while now, and he was trying to get this made, of course, for years. Uh, how early did the discussion start for what this makeup would look like? Uh, it started as early as when we were working on Django uh, Unchained. Um, uh, doing the age makeup on him, we started, you know, the Steven makeup, we started to have some discussions about aging him even more. He didn't tell me what the project name was at that time. He did mention that he um, had an affinity for it because the character had Alzheimer's and uh, his mother had had it, as did mine as well. So we kind of had a little bit of a bond on that, but it had started as early as that. Uh, and it's based on, uh, you know, the limited series is based on the book by Walter Mosley. Uh, did you draw any inspiration from it in terms of how the makeup would look? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I read the book and uh, tried to glean as much info as I could out of it. And one of the big things that uh, we had in early discussions about it was uh, just like how he was going to age. And a lot of times when uh, they decide to show somebody that maybe not you know, uh, sound capacity and all that, they tend to make them look really bad as far as like they're just uh, almost to the point of like a hobo or a junkie or something like that. But this was just a man who didn't really have the ability to, to take care of himself as much as he would. I mean, he could still function and all that, just his mental capacity was gone. So we, uh, you know, we gleaned out of that book was that we wanted to make him look um, more human and not a, not a caricature of somebody that was, you know, not sound. Uh, and you know, what uh, other research did you do, if any, to kind of walk that fine line uh, to uh, create that look that would uh, have that, you know, hit, hit that middle ground exactly right? I uh, got on, did a lot of research. Um, I was in Atlanta on another show at the time, and I just started to uh, just go on the internet and started to look up um, reference photos of uh, older African American males. And even uh, more fine tuned later on, uh, dementia, because there's sometimes there's a little bit of a look in the eyes that can happen as they, you know, kind of start to lose focus on some things. But uh, I went through a lot of that and had dis discussions with Sam about it, and also Camille Friend, who was his uh, hair designer as well on there. And we really wanted to not go in any sort of, um, uh, for lack of a better word, a stereotype look as uh people of color will age differently than you know than other other folks so we didn't want to get into the thing where we were just adding wrinkles to make him look older for you know the the untrained eye for lack of a better word but so we did that and started to show sam that and sam started submitting some photos as well he had sent some photos of like harry belafonte and sydney portier who were well into their 90s at the time who really did not have show much, they looked very young for their age, very young. And uh, we started to base some of the looks on that. And there was a piece of artwork that I found, or a photo that I found online that we kind of based it on. And uh, in conjunction with the looks that we, uh, Sam had submitted as well. Uh, now, you mentioned Camille Friend. Uh, I actually had a chance to uh, talk to her a few days ago. Um, and uh, she talked about how in working together to get uh, uh, Jackson ready for shooting, you had this kind of dance that you developed around each other. Yeah. Uh, did, did that sort of rhythm between the two of you develop right away or did it take time? It's, we'd worked together a number of times uh, and with Sam as well. So we did have a choreography that would happen. The usual ritual is I would um, tackle his makeup, the prosthetic work and all that. And then there was usually a point at which I could step down and Camille could step in to apply the wig. And once that was applied, then we would work together on it. So once it was applied, she would start uh, styling it and getting some fine tuning on the edges and all that. And I would continue with the coloring and then start adding the facial hair appliances uh, and in addition to the prosthetics on there. And uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty non-communicative. Uh, and, and actually that, happened early on it wasn't really something where we kind of had to say well okay you do this at this point and i'll do this we've both been working in the industry long enough that we can kind of kind of read each other and read the room as far as how how you can move in and also too you know you've got space limitations and trailers as well 
Um, and you know, Jackson has a, a, a few different looks over the course of the uh, series as his condition changes. Uh, mm -hmm. What was the uh, look that was the fastest to apply to him and, and which one took the longest? They were all pretty kind of ran around the same timeline. We kind of had some uh, uh, requirements that we didn't have time to do like sort of di different prosthetics for the different ages, if you will, because uh, he starts out in a state of disrepair. So we had a prosthetic, uh, the prosthetics that were done, which are actually done by Vincent Van Dyke in his shop, fantastic work. And um, so there was a uh, two prosthetics that ran along the side and into the jowl. There was another pair of pieces that ran underneath the eye, sort of the eye bag thing into crow's feet. And then uh, at the beginning, we had some very subtle laced eyebrows just on the outer edge to make them look a little wiry and wispy. Uh, mustache, soul patch, goatee, sideburns, and then I filled in the rest. And the facial hair appliances were done by Sasha Camacho over at uh, Vincent Van Dyke Productions and fantastic work as well on that. Um, so um, yeah, we would just, uh, you know, get into that, you know, get into the groove of doing that makeup, which usually took, they, they, all, they all took about an hour and a half. The prosthetics were the exact same for when he becomes a little bit more healthy after he takes the medication. But all we did on that one was remove his facial hair and start making his hair look a little bit cleaner. And we removed the lace eyebrows as well. And the thought behind that was that he's now aware of his appearance and he now, just, I don't want to come off this way. So takes everything off. So the prosthetics were exactly the same. Uh, the wig was the same, just restyled the coloration was changed a little bit on uh, the oldest stage he we did a little bit more around the kind of darken the eyes just a little bit and a little bit more shading here and there on the post medicated look he started to have a little bit more of a healthier glow to him if you will uh, there is also some stuff that was done for the flashback scenes that take place in the 70s and camille and i had worked with sam on captain marvel where we had to um I had a phrase we called euthanizing them, which is not the appropriate one. We <laughs> make them look younger. And uh, with that, we used some lifts on his neck and uh, near the sideburns to kind of soften the nasal labials. And then there were prosthetics on top of that. And then the hair pieces. It was pretty much the same thing we did uh, on this one as well on Ptolemy Gray with the addition of a mustache and a wig. And then uh, that one was altered digitally as well to just kind of help reduce some mass and soften some lines and, and that. And then the very last stage that you see him is once the medication is worn off when he's hospitalized, we, that one was just the same makeup. The facial hair pieces were not trimmed, so they just kind of went amok because he was unattended at that point. And then also coloration on that was made to make him look a little bit more unhealthy. But all of them took about an hour and a half. The, the, I think the, when we did the flashback, uh, the 70s look, I think that one was sitting maybe about an hour, I think, but it never got over an hour and a half. Uh, is it generally, uh, you know, more challenging to age someone up or age someone down, would you say? It entirely depends on their facial structure. Um, somebody like myself, it, it's hard to do both ways because I'm a little bit fuller in the face and all that. Uh, one of the rules about prosthetic work is you can add, but you can't take away. So if somebody has a lean face, um, you, there's ways that you can help that out by adding sockets and, you know, doing a little bit more mass. If somebody has a fuller face, um, if you start adding on top of it, now they just look bigger and bulkier. But um, making them look younger certainly is a little bit easier with the assist of uh, CGI. So that kind of helps it a little bit as well. I certainly will not take credit for any of the, the real euthanizing in there, but uh, by doing that on set uh, or on the day, it physically made Sam look a, a quite a bit younger, actually. And it helped him in his preparation and it helped the other actors to react to somebody in a younger look as well. Uh, rather than just relying 100% on digital and have him carry himself, you know, as is now. Um, could have been done, obviously, but I think it helped across the board to do it that way. Uh, of course, it's also important for uh, an actor's performance to still be able to come through with uh, any makeup they might have on, um, you know, not just in this uh, project, but in any, any given project, uh, you know, how challenging is it to find that balance? 
Um, I think, in my, my opinion, I think one of the biggest things you want to do, even if you're creating a likeness, is to try to have the actor come through, uh, to be physically be able to see that actor within it. It's very easy to do, I don't say it's very easy, but it's, um, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to kind of completely cover everybody up and hide them within a character. And if, they, if that's what it needs to happen, right, fantastic. I find it more of a challenge to try to get the actor to be seen in there, as does the fans and the management wants to be able to see Sam Jackson in there. And honestly, even if I did cover him up entirely, once you hear the voice, you know who it is. So um, I tend to like to try to keep it a little bit more so we can see the actor within rather than doing a complete mask. And again, even if you're creating a likeness, um, there have been some fantastic work this year recently where they've done something where you almost have to address who the actor is inside of it because they're they're completely covered or in, in, engrossed in the makeup. Um, but uh, it's fantastic work either way. Um, and what would you say was the most uh, challenging aspect of, of, you know, creating Tommy Gray overall? Um, I think the toughest thing initially was I was away when the, the first uh, sculpture started being done at Vincent's. And not that that was a problem at all, but sometimes I'd like, like to be a little bit more present with those as well, just to have, we did great communication and we didn't even miss a beat on it. The time frame we had prior to filming was adequate. You always was like a little bit more, but that doesn't always happen. Um, I think one of the biggest concerns that I had or challenges was Sam was in this makeup in excess of 60 days, which is a long run uh, wearing prosthetic. A lot of consecutive days. He rarely had days off. Um, the toughest, well, the toughest thing, but the biggest concern was to just make sure his skin was healthy the whole time. And uh, it, it, it worked. There was some prep work that was done at the beginning. There was consideration when we were removing the makeup at the end of the night. And uh, we never had any issues at all with it as well. And, and luckily we were in Atlanta during the heat, which I would normally be nervous about, but Sam loves the heat. And uh, he actually doesn't really perspire if at any. So he just grew up in, the, in that sort of uh, climate. So he became quite used to it. So it was a little bit, uh, it, was, it was a joy to work with. Um, and having been in the uh, industry for, for many years now, uh, what inspired you to get into uh, film and TV makeup in general? Uh, I, was, I was raised in Minnesota and I liked horror movies when I was growing up. And I, I think every Halloween became sort of a fun time for me. So I just wanted to try to see if I could create Frankenstein or the Wolfman and other characters uh, from the Universal series and all that. And I had fun with it. I, I didn't even really realize that it could be a profession, especially, you know, growing up in the, you know, countryside in Minnesota. But then, uh, you know, as time went on, I realized, wow, this is actually a tangible field. And I worked in Minneapolis for probably about five or six years, uh, just doing regular beauty makeup corrective. And I did everything from, you know, uh, you know, commercials, uh, appearances, uh, you know, runway, uh, television, you know, a little bit of everything in there. So that was kind of my education. And I didn't have the ability to say no to anything because I didn't want to lose any work. So I'd be frantically going to the library, which, you know, now you can go online and find out readily. So, um, yeah, so that was, that was it. And I really, I did have a fascination with it and moved out to LA in 90 and haven't had a day job since. Um, and over the course of, of your career, you know, uh, you've worked on, uh, you know, some iconic makeup and everything from the X-Files to Star Trek to Walking Dead. Uh, is, is there a project that you're sort of most proud of, of helping create uh, thus far in your career? Well, I, Ptolemy's right up there. Um, I think because it's something that kind of goes by without really somebody looking at it. They just, they think Sam looks different, which is, you know, great. It, it doesn't address itself as makeup. Um, the very first Hellboy, uh, I did Ron Perlman's makeup on that. That one was entirely fun for a number of reasons. Um, and uh, that one, he was in the makeup. I, I think we had him 85 times in it, but I think all of them, you know, all the makeups that I've done on different shows have had challenges. And I, I still tell people that are getting into it initially that, you know, if, if you feel that you've 
done a perfect job, you may as well quit because, you know, you've achieved the zenith now, you know, move on to something else, become an oncologist if you're that quick a learner. So, um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I've been pleased with some, I've been displeased with the number of makeups as well, but that's, that's kind of what gets you a little bit better. You know, if you look at it and say it's perfect again, walk away. Well, I want to congratulate you on your work in uh, Ptolemy Gray um, and all the work uh, in your career now and in the future. Uh, I look forward to seeing more. And uh, thank you so much for talking to me about it. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. 